Hello and welcome to our project lab in the FPGA VHDL lecture series. In today's lab, we are going to do a project called Voting Machine using our FPGA platform. So here we are going to implement a state machine for the voting machine. This is the state machine that we are going to implement as a part of the voting machine. Here we can see that our voting machine has initial, check, party 1, party 2, party 3 and done. 6 states. So we will need 6 states in our finite state machine design. Here the inputs to our system are reset, the signal party 1, party 2, party 3 and the signal select. The outputs for, for our system is count 1, count 2, count 3 which represent the counts that is the number of votes that each party has gained. The state initial is just to check if any party button is pressed. Then the state check is to actually check which of the party button is pressed. Depending on which button is pressed, we go to that state. If party 1 button is pressed, we go to party 1 state and respectively for party 2 and party 3. After selecting the party, we have to press the button select to actually vote for that party. So we take that button select as an input from the user. Once that is done, count is incremented in the following states of party 1, party 2, party 3 and everything leads to the done state. Once it is in the done state, we go back to the initial state unconditionally. In the initial state, if reset is high, we stay in the loop. In the check state, if none of the party buttons are pressed, we again stay in the loop. So let us go ahead and implement this in VHDL. For this, we go to our Xilinx ISC Design Suite Project Navigator. Then we go to File, New Project. Let us say this is voting machine. We click on next, next, finish. Now we are welcomed by the very own project navigator screen. We go to our project and add a new source. It is of the type VHDL module. Let us call it voting machine. next next finish now in the entity part we first start with the keyword port one of the prime important inputs that we have is the clock input which is of the type standard logic since this is a clocked process then we have the reset input of the type standard logic also we have party buttons Now once the three parties are done, we have a special input called a SELECT. Now 
Now here select cannot be used as an input as it is an built in keyword. So let us call this as select party. Then we have three outputs count one OP for output. Now this is of the type standard logic vector. Since our party words won't be digital ones and zeros, but they will be a collection of ones and zeros. So let us call them as standard logic vector of say 5 down to 0. This size can be increased as and when required. And that's it. We can end our entity. Now beginning with the architecture, we need some signals. So so let us take a few signals. Uh, say. count 1, count 2, count 3 of the type standard logic vector five down to zero. Here I have taken these count 1, count 2, count 3 to actually count the number of words for each party as we cannot directly write on the output we have to do the arithmetic operations on signals and these signals can then be given to the output hence the size of the output and the signals must match here it is 5 down to 0 then we need a signal called a state to run our one hard coding of finite state machines. This is a standard logic vector of the size 5 down to 0. This size is 5 down to 0 because we have only 6 states. Then we must define constants for our states. Our first state is called initial. This is of the type standard logic vector. Five down to zero. Five down to zero again because of the fact that we have only five states. And I initialize this with the number zero 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 one. This is as per our one hot coding technique. Then let us go back to our state machine diagram. The next state that we have is the check state. So let us incorporate that as a constant. Of the same type standard logic vector phi down to zero. But this time I initialize this with the number 000, 000, 010. Again moving with the one hot coding technique. 
then we have three states in our state machine diagram called party 1, party 2 and party 3. So let us define these as party 1 state as the names might clash so let us avoid any confusion there 5 down to 0 this time I'll initialize this with the number 0 0 0 1 0 0 here you can see that the number 1 is shifting towards left by one one digit similarly I will define party 2 and party 3 state here I have already defined party 1 state, party 2 state and party 3 state with the numbers being initialized as 000 one zero 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 one zero 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 one zero and zero 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 here again we can see that the number one is shifting towards left as per our FSM design technique now coming to the last state that is the done state this is a standard logic vector of the type 5 down to 0 and initialized with the number 100000 zero 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 zero. now we have all our signals and constants definitions done let us begin with our process in the process first of all we'll start with the sensitivity list in the sensitivity list we define the parameters that will affect our process or that will trigger our process so let us say clock party 1 party 2 and party 3 must trigger the process to execute some code in the process we begin also we must add the signal reset to the process sensitivity list so in the process after we begin our process initially we check if reset is 1 if reset is 1 then as per our if statement syntax we must initialize all the counts to 0 here this is a nice little way to initialize everything to 0 once that is done in the else part we can start with our actual state machine design in the else part we can write an if statement to detect the rising edge of the clock also we can put a condition that reset must be zero if this is true then our process will execute that is whatever code is written now will be executed at every rising edge of the clock so it is a time triggered system which is triggered at every rising edge of the clock provided the reset signal is zero also we can initialize the state 
to be initial here remember that state is a variable that is going to take the names of initial check party 1 state party 2 state party 3 state and done so during reset the state must be in initial state now let us write our traditional case statement case state is here the case is treated as a variable or a signal which will take the values initial check party 1 state party 2 state party 3 state and done so depending on the value of state we need to define certain actions so let us go back to our original state machine diagram in the initial state we want to check if party 1 party 2 or party 3 state any one of these are high and if the if any one of these are high the NSL or the next state logic would include that the state transition from initial to check is taking place there is no OFL or output function logic for this particular state so we start with the NSL part of the initial state so I write when initial let me put a comment saying NSL if party 1 equal to 1 or party 2 equal to 1 or party 3 equal to 1 then my e my state must transition from being initial to check so I write that condition after this or else my state must be stuck in the initial state so here if any one of these three buttons is pressed state will go to the next state if not the state will remain in the initial state this is the logic behind this block and our NSL plot part is done yet there is no OFL as such for this particular block now let us look at the next state which is the check state in check state coming back to our state diagram if party 1 is high we go to party 1 state party 2 is high we go to party 2 state if party 3 is high we go to party 3 state we are mm, excluding the possibility that two of them can be high at the same time this would probably lead to erroneous results so let me write the NSL part here it is a general convention to start with the NSL and then go on to write the OFL here if party 1 is high then state gets party 1 state else if party 2 is high then state gets party 2 state else if party 3 is I then 
स्टेट गेट्स पार्टी थ्री स्टेट एल्स इफ ऑल द अबाउ कंडीशन आर फॉल्स स्टेट रिमेन्स इन दी चेक स्टेट हियर आफ्टर एनी इफ स्टेटमेंट वी मस्ट ऑलवेज एंड इट विद एन एंड इफ स्टेटमेंट So here we have written our end if for the NSL part of check state. There is no OFL part as such, so leave it as it is. Now let us come to party one state. So when party one state, first of all we declare the NSL. The or the next state logic part. So if coming back to our state machine diagram, if select is high, we go to the done state. That is the NSL part. And in the OFL part, we increment the count. In the NSL part, if select input is high, here select is a keyword, so we had. taken select party instead select party is high then state gets done state else state remains in party one state and if now moving on to the ofl part here the ofl consists of just one thing that is incrementing the count here i take count one as the count for party 1 also it is important to note that count 1 is not an output but a signal we cannot perform arithmetic logic arithmetic operations on the signal although we can perform logical operations and count 1 cannot be an output but it is ha it has to be a signal so that we can use this plus operator here now party 2 state is going to be exactly the same as we can see party 2 2 state is exactly same as party 1 state except for the fact that here party 1 state is replaced by party 2 state and count 1 is replaced by count 2 party 3 state is also going to be exactly the same here we can see that party 3 state is exactly same as party 1 and 2 except that here the state is party 3 and the count is count 3 now let us move on to our last state of the state machine which is the done state in the done state the nsl as we can see is unconditionally to the initial state so once we reach the done state we are going back to initial state unconditionally and there is no ofa so i'll write nsl state gets initial and there in no ofl now one important thing to note here is to include the when others statement if any of the above is not true 
we must always fall back onto our initial state. That is expected from our system that if anything crashes, we go back to the original state. Now, this is the end of our process of state machine design. Let us end process here. Before ending process, we need to end a, quite a few if statements. Here is one if statement. Here is another if statement. So we need to end two if statements in the end. Then we can end our process. Finally, we assign the outputs to their corresponding signals. So that these signals inside can get routed to the outside world via these buses. It is important to note that these assignments are outside the process and not inside it. So these assignments are not triggered by the clock but they happen always. Also we need to end our case statement. by writing the keywords end case then let us go ahead and save and go ahead and synthesize our code so to use the plus operand here we need to add a specific library from our IEEE standard library called arithmetic library. So here we use the same IEEE dot standard logic underscore arith dot all. Once we do that also we need to add one more library which is called an unsigned library. So, after adding the arith and unsigned library, so the errors are shown down here in the errors section and the warnings are shown here in the warning section. Here as we can see our code was synthesized successfully and hardware could be made out of it. Let us go ahead and look at the technology schematic here we can see that a lot of digital logic blocks have been made from our state machine which represent the voting machine that we just created that's it for today's lab